for this uh, session. I have to say, since this was this new kind of a uh, session that um, or topic, I really did enjoy this. So hopefully we will. Uh, I think I got some new ideas from this one and found it really interesting. And since we decided to skip our coffee break, uh, we will then move move. Uh, or Michael decided we will skip our coffee break. <laughs> we will uh, move directly on to our uh, session nine. So I would ask Paolo, Arnulf, Schiert and Naira to please come up to the podium. So we can then swiftly move on to the next one. And please bring your uh, name, name tags with you so you can use it here. And maybe the current presenters can take yours if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so you can just pick, pick. Uh, empty, empty, please. Yes. This will also give you some exercise in the end of the day when you have to <laughs> do fast changes. Sure. So the next, uh, next session will be as mentioned, uh, about water accounts and related indicators. And our session chair is already familiar to you, uh, Paolo from FAO. So I will hand directly over to you. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, it's a pleasure to here to be with you today. It's the last one, so it's the last mile, uh, last and final mile. The, the session is on water counts and rate indicators and is composed by four presentations. The first presentation is going to be provided online, if, I'm, if my notes are well, from Mauro Bigotto on uh, uh, an update on harmonization of internal water questionnaires with the SIA. And Mauro is based on OECD as a statistician at the Environment Directorate in particular, and he works on multiple environmental topics, including water. He's also involved with interagency work on harmonizing water questionnaires, aligning the SIA, and improving data for SDG reporting. Mauro, the floor is yours, and I will just briefly interrupt you and apologize in advance when it's three minutes to the, to the hour, to the hour, to the quarter of the hour. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, Michael, would you um, share the presentation or should I? Please share, share it. Okay. I would prefer it. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Um, okay, so this is, this is a presentation as introduced by the chair. On the work that we do, we. Um, sorry, we can see the presentation, but it's not in the presentation mode. So maybe you can uh, put sorry. that on. That better. Yes, now it's good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I was saying this is this is a presentation on the work we're doing with partner agencies on uh, harmonization of uh, uh, international water questions uh, between different organizations and in better aligning with uh, with the CIA. Um So. Just a quick introduction. The, um, um, the, um, uh, the OECD has been um, uh, administering uh, a questionnaire on water since the late 70s and early 80s. It has become a joint OECD Eurostat questionnaire in 1988. And then a simplified version of it uh, is being administered by UNSD and UNEP uh, since 1999. And uh, there have been regular revisions uh, of these uh, following uh, statistical developments and policy needs. So um, we have a sort of layered uh, approach uh, whereby Eurostat deals with EU countries, uh, OECD uh, deals with um, other OECD member countries and UNSD, UNEP uh, uh, do all the rest. So we have a quasi-global uh, country coverage. Um, this data is, is regularly used in, to support international work, work on water policies, country reviews by different organizations, and also, importantly, to report on SDGs. Um, so the uh, three uh, uh, water-related SDGs on water use efficiency, water stress, and uh, wastewater uh, safely treated. 
since 2018, uh, FAO has also been um, sending out a questionnaire uh, through, for its Aquastat database for its SDG reporting. And since then, we've been having regular uh, coordination meetings uh, between uh, the OECD, UNSD, FAO, and Eurostat. And uh, WHO and UN Habitat joined in 2020 uh, to discuss mostly about uh, uh, SDG 631 on wastewater. So we've been discussing options for aligning questionnaires in terms of content, coverage, uh, and especially in terms of um, terms, glossary, and definitions, uh, be uh, because uh, uh, definitions do not always uh, align, even though uh, uh, we, the questions are very close. Um, we've been also discussing practical arrangements for collaborating on data collections and uh, try to work to improve uh, uh, data availability for SDGs and other uh, indicator reports. Okay, so um, as said, um, we, uh, we've been working to harmonize the definition and better line to see uh, framework. Uh, we've been uh, comparing questionnaires uh, to see differences in definitions. And um, uh, also we've been, we've been doing some work on, in terms of comparing um, country submissions uh, to the different organizations and way to mobilize uh, uh, better data. Um, so we uh, currently, um, uh, uh, I mean, which uh, together with Eurostat, we've been uh, conducting a consultation with EU member countries uh, on uh, a series of uh, modifications uh, that we discussed with uh, the international partners. Um, and these are, um, are meant to uh, uh, not only on one side clarify uh, certain uh, definitions and concepts which we, uh, we thought that are, uh, needed to be clarified, uh, but also to have uh, definitions which are better aligned uh, with the CIA. Um, so these amendments, uh, which we have uh, submitted to countries for, for, for feedback, um, are mainly revolve around definitions on water use, uh, consumption, uh, and associated flow scheme. This is really important because uh, we've, we've found that, as you may know, uh, that the um, definitions of these important variables uh, are uh, not always coherent and they may differ uh, in, uh, in different circumstances across questionnaires, but also uh, more importantly between the SIA central framework and SIA water on the other side. Uh, so the SIA uh, central framework is not always coherent with the SIA water. And we also find that uh, there is often a confusion um, uh, between uh, what is meant by water use and water consumption. Sometimes they use inter interchangeably, uh, 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 sometimes definitions differ. So it is, it's, we, we thought it's really important to, uh, to clarify some of this. Um, uh, so um, up to now, I mean, we're very pleased to, um, uh, of the feedback that we've got from uh, EU countries and from some other international organization on this. So we are, we have, we are working on, on adjusting these amendments and the flow scheme to uh, respond, uh, to address these uh, feedback from countries. And we are pretty confident that we will be able to implement these uh, um, amendments in the next 2023 data collection. That's for the joint um, uh, OECD Eurostat questionnaire, and then possibly uh, also by UNSD UNEP uh, in their next task collection, will be, which will be in 2024. And of course, we will continue to work with, um, with FAO to, um, to better align uh, definitions and uh, conceptual frameworks and so on between, on one side, uh, the uh, uh, OECD Eurostat and UNSD uh, UNEP questionnaire and the FAO on the other side. So, um, just a, a bit of a recap here. Uh, um, the international, these international water questionnaires were developed uh, based on water statistics and hydrological definitions and conceptual schemes, combined with some basic accounting principle. As I mentioned before, um, our joint questionnaire is a broad line uh, with the UNSD UNEP one, 
and broadly also aligned with SIA. So that was quite good news, but there are still some differences that uh, we're trying to address here. Um, several tables are based on the principle of uh, water accounts, such as the use of Isaac uh, uh, breakdown. But as said, there are some differences in definitions. Um, so just giving some examples here, um, uh, one is groundwater abstraction. Um, in the, the water accounts do not define abstraction from ground, groundwater as the difference between water abstracted and water that is artificially recharged into the aquifer uh, because the accounts record these flows separately. Uh, they consider the artificial recharge uh, of water into the aquifer as, an, as a flow from the economy to the environment. And so it is recorded as a return flow. This was not the case in the in the joint questionnaire, so we decided to align uh, to the um, to the uh, to the SIA. Another example is uh, uh, the reuse water, um, because uh, in the in the um, uh, in the joint questionnaire uh, only uh, treated water uh, was considered as uh, what we call re reclaimed water as reused water, whereas the water accounts. Also include the uh, wastewater that is delivered to a user with without a treatment. So we decided to uh, align to this. Uh, but there are also other differences uh, uh, with the accounts uh, that uh, will remain, and the reason is that um, um, water water statistics have sometimes different objectives, and. Um, and so uh, we decided to keep this uh, to to leave these 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 differences, but we will make it explicit uh, that um, that uh, this is this is something that is different from the water accounts. Um, one example is the abstraction for hydroelectricity. Uh, in the joint questionnaire, these are not counted there because they are uh, considered as in situ uses. Um, uh, another one, another difference is uh, the sources of water. In the um, uh, in the joint questionnaire, we uh, we identify surface and groundwater, and we also uh, distinguish between fresh water and non-fresh water, such as, such as brackish uh, water, uh, as the the water accounts. Uh, but the water accounts include other sources of uh, water, such as uh, soil water, which uh, we do not. Um, Another difference, another major difference, is that cooling water is considered as wastewater in the in the uh, in the accounts, uh, which in, which made sense uh, in a way because um, uh, because cooling water can be uh, polluted uh, at least marginally uh, uh, by um, by, for example, metals uh, that, that are corroded uh, on uh, cooling towers. And uh, but uh, the um, OECD uh, Eurostat questionnaire does not consider this to be uh, wastewater. Um, so, in terms of establishing simple water accounts, uh, the water accounts is one of the five priority accounts identified by UNCEA. Um, so there is a plan to progressively move towards water accounts, uh, although um, uh, this is probably a, 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 a bit slower than we uh, uh, might have been expected. Um, so one prag pragmatic approach would be to use the existing international uh, questionnaire as a vehicle to uh, populate uh, simple uh, uh, accounting tables um, and thus contribute to the establishment of uh, global water accounts, although it's simple because <clears throat> Because um, the, um, the, the the existing questionnaires uh, uh, cannot uh, cannot fill the, all of the tables. Um, this would build on the guidance uh, that uh, was released in 2017 on technical of, of water accounting. The earlier work that has been done by Eurostat and uh, EU countries on uh, some piloting of uh, water accounts, uh, and I believe it was uh, it was mainly the Netherlands. Um, and but also potentially some work with uh, volunteering countries and, and other experts um, to do some pilot testing uh, using existing data to um, uh, to fill in uh, simplified water uh, water tables, and of course involve the SIA technical committee. Um, so this is just a, a table um, um, 
which uh, does a mapping between uh, uh, on uh, uh, between the water uh, table, water accounting table on the left, and the uh, uh, questionnaire tables on the right. So I'm not going to go into the details of this, uh, but this is to say that um, uh, quite a few um, quite a few flows from the economy to the environment can be um, covered by the existing tables. Um, Data availabilities and qualities are still major issues. Uh, so, um, today, Mauro, two minutes, please. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, we still need to uh, to work to improve uh, uh, data quality uh, and availability. Um, so, as said, we we um, we will work on uh, more detailed evaluation with countries and uh, and Eurostat. Um, possibly exploiting alternative data sources and uh, and as said uh, pilot testing and uh, and then reporting to UNCEA uh, or or maybe organizing a dedicated workshop with international organization and countries to help advance the measurement so I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll just stop here and uh, the floor is back to you the chair thank you to you Mauro and apologize but uh... You know, I have the, the responsibility to keep the, 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 the time more or less on track. So, and I thank you for the highlighting the importance of clarification and, and uh, an alignment of the concepts and the definitions in terms of, of the elements regarding water accounts, like including water use and water consumption, that this effort is a collective effort. So it's not something that you learn. And this dedicated workshop may be indeed a fantastic way of going ahead. Having that said, this, I thank you again, Mauro. Please stay online before the open discussion. We go move forward, and we're going to have a presentation by our colleague and friend from the Environmental Agency in Austria, Arnulf. Arnulf is a senior expert at uh, the Environmental Agency Austria, in Austria and has been working in the field of water statistics and water accounts for over a decade. He is also active as a consultant, international technical assistant projects, and represents Austria in our start working groups on water statistics. Uh, Arnulf, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much for Michael to give us, me, the opportunity to present our project here. The presentation topic is a bit different from what we heard the last two and the half days, it's rather on a capacity building program. Um, of course, with some accounting aspects uh, with water accounting. And uh, the program, the, the presentation is that I will uh, introduce you to the introduction for the support of water accounts in EU Eastern partner countries, um, which is one activity within a program called European Union for environment on water and data eastern partner countries. I'm very glad um, colleagues are here from these countries and they probably see it quite familiar what they now see here then we'll see. Um, the presentation, what's happened now? No problem. Um, I will give you a short introduction about the program and then some findings. Um, the, there are there are two components. The goal I later say, one component. The first one is working on uh, water resource management issues, very strongly related to the Water Framework Directive. And the second one is on data and they are also very much in statistical environmental data. The program is based on the European Neighborhood Instrument East Regional Action Program 2020 and is built on prior programs on the European Union um, Water Initiative Plus and on the Shared Environmental Information System 2. And as I was saying, there are two components. The first one is dealing with the water resources and with, with the Water Framework Directive, and the second one with environmental data, um, with, with the aim on uh, knowledge-based decision-making, support information for knowledge-based decision-making. 
Who is on board? Five countries, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine. Greetings to all of the colleagues who are here present, and we are already in contact. A short overview on the program setup. Um, the program is in, uh, under the DG NIA, and a program implementation team was set up consisting of five institutions of the Environment Agency Austria, Shortcut UBA, uh, Office of the Law of the Austrian Development Agency, OECD, and UNEC. We all have contracts with the DG NIA. How is it? Um, there are five national program representatives in each of, of the countries, and there are two offices who, regional offices who support the Caucasus countries and, and uh, Moldova and Ukraine. Water accounts is jointly implemented um, by myself and my colleague Benoit Fribourg Blanc from Office uh, de Law. Um, and we are carrying out, indeed, our uh, activities with the countries together. We are in the middle of the implementation phase. We had a six-month inception phase, which lasted uh, till June last year. And now we are in, in, in the middle, having still a bit more than a year to go. Now, the second for the second component, which is on environmental statistics and open data, is the specific objective is to use of sound environmental statistics by the partner countries, by the one, is extended and improved, and better availability of policy-relevant data to decision makers and citizens ensured. So uh, with this very long sentence, the, it was discussed already in the days, the practicability, the applicability of the data, um, that is an add value is very much in our focus, in, in the focus of our work. There are in total 13 outputs. One output is uh, looking on water accounts, and the objective is the name of the, of the output is that uh, extend water accounts in the eastern partner countries. What was the starting point? Because our program evolved out of the size East 2 program, we looked at the results. And what is quite interesting to see is that the situation in regard of water accounts in the five countries is quite different. Opa. Um, they, they, in, in the size East project, they were looking on water stock accounts, but also on water flow accounts. And uh, giving on a one example on, on Armenia, which already carries out, and we will hear today part of the presentation also that the fiscal supply and use tables are existing. Other countries are still in the starting point. Within this output, we have three main activities. The first one was the inception, which basically looked for the status assessment. What does it include? It? Which data are there? Which mainly institutions are there? Um, how well known is the concept of water counting. That were the questions we asked. Then now uh, the, the second and the third one are running parallel. One is that to extend the number of countries with a functional water counting system. What does it mean? It mainly that we look into institutional cooperation on national level. Um, environmental agency, statistics, um, statistic institute, that uh, hydrometeorological institute, uh, Chamber of Commerce, maybe ETC, and the data sources, the data quality. The third one is where in countries already some uh, tables, data existing, where the concept is already known, we then would like to look already in gap filling and how to communicate the results. Um, up to the first step is, of course, also to look on national level and on an annual time scale, while Coming from water engineering, river basin management, of course, we would be interested in to look also on a seasonal scale and river basin scale. And there I'm already to my, uh, the findings which we have, and that is somehow a summary, I would say, what uh, during the days, the three days were discussed, even also today, 
is that in a project like that, the starting point is to really to build a common understanding of terminology between the institutions involved. It was not directly said maybe like this one, um, but um, just now from our own consumption. On the one side, a water engineer probably understands water consumption really different than some water statisticians or water use than um, the, the, the general assumption on, on what is required might be different. And these water accounts exercise brings people together, that is very helpful. And beside the, the different languages, people, experts with different backgrounds are speaking. Also the findings is that uh, English language is a common language, the manuals are available. However, you, you have an additional aspect when you translate technical terminologies in national languages, which we have here. So we touched upon that concretely to really to make sure that at least after some meetings, people who are sitting in the same room understand under a certain terminology really the same stuff. That is so-called soft skills and quite often neglected, honestly, by the high-class experts who are saying, well, my topic is we need to calculate precipitation and start up and come up with the experience. And they talk, 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 and then the other one is talk, 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 and everyone somehow believes, understands the same, but unfortunately not. And I consider that in regard of the sustainability of the process very important. If this common language is not established, it's very difficult that the, the topic as such survives the program or the project. Um, what was very nice is really that uh, in all of the countries, independently from the level of development, uh, was that uh, water accounts is, uh, they have a positive view on water accounts and on the concept. And uh, they say, yes, that's very interesting. Yeah, we would like to work on that one. But in the same moment, they would say, well, we would uh, unfortunately align our national data sets. That is quite natural because the data sets are administrative data sets. We had just here before on the carbon uh, accounting, the issue on, on quality of data sets, that the statistic world has probably different, I wouldn't like to say different standards, but different approaches, while probably the administrative data world where people need to make decisions on water allocations, is uh, different. So administrative data need to be converted into the statistical world, into the statistical form from, from water accounts. And that is a demand. And there was a question from Armenia, OK, uh, do we need more funds? Yes, definitely we need more funds, everyone. That doesn't apply only for countries where I'm working. That applies for my home country, too. So the question of um, what I gain, what we as a country would gain for, needs to be answered. And that is, of course, also part of our work that we look into that. Not, not on the costs, but in principle to understand, yeah, it is worth to look at this. And let's go ahead on that one. Link to that one, also on the common understanding, is this instrument of working groups. It's all the time very tricky if you don't know how to progress, the working group needs to come up. But uh, it has proven that working groups on a new item in the water accounting and in general, in, in corporations where you have knowledge transfer and we have to um, involve really a number of institutions with different backgrounds, is very helpful. In an ideal case, this working group is uh, established and kicked off through the program, which the program lasts one, one and a half years. And hopefully the program makes a good job. And then the understanding is, yes, we will continue with the working group. So that, that is, has then a national mandate. It doesn't mean probably at the beginning when terminologies are discussed and thoughts and understanding needs to be achieved and when the direction and priorities need to be set needs to be more frequently. But then afterwards it could be probably also um, linked to water resource topics when um, discussions on, on groundwater quality, 
where the amount of water, for example, is important, could be attached to. So there are different uh, possibilities what can be done. So, but this working group seems to be really some hub for the development and, and putting the seed in a country, particularly for subjects like water accounts. And the third one is what um, was very nice also what to see is also the cross-border cooperation that countries with uh, different um, approaches or status of development, but somehow share a similar, um, similar setup of their institutions due to a history which has been probably 20 years ago, but institutions are similar probably questionnaires, and that is not only linked to this program, I have seen that one in other countries too, that neighboring countries who were once in one country, even after 20 years, they have the same questionnaire to the industry in regard of water abstraction, water use. And you, you wouldn't imagine that when you come, and probably also in the different languages, but this uh, cross-border cooperation might be quite quite also, and in, in our program, I found it quite um, uh, helpful for the knowledge exchange, particular in a setting where um, people who facilitate the process, process, process like Benoit and I are coming really from a different place with language issues. It, it is very helpful on that one. And that was it. Thank you very much. We thank you, Arno, for such a um, uh, rich experience working with five different countries, five different realities that have similar aspirations and similar goals relating to um, water accounts and working together in these five countries and councils for a better availability of policy relevant data on water resources to decision makers and investors. And also, this issue of Working together, establish a common language, as you say, soft skills is not, is, it's, it's at all not to be downplayed. And we thank you so much for sharing this privilege, the situation that you are working until the end of next year, of 2024. Having that said, we move ahead to Schrod. Uh, it, has, it has need further introduction. Is uh, being with us for quite some presentation from Statistics Netherlands, CBS, and Schroed is going to share with us water counts and policy use in the Netherlands. Schroed, the floor is yours. Thank you, Al. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Paolo. Yes, it's a pleasure to present to you the water counts of the Netherlands. Uh, first, again, let me acknowledge the work of my colleagues uh, who worked on this project uh, last year, uh, Jocelyn and Kees Baas, um, and also, of course, Eurostat, who financed this project with an Eurostat grant. I will talk a, bit, a little bit about water in the Netherlands, uh, talk about the data sources and the compilation of the water accounts. I will show you some results of our project and indeed also talk about the uses and demand of water data that we have identified for the Netherlands. So first short introduction on, in, on water on the Netherlands. Well, water is very important for the Netherlands, as you may know. Um, we are partly below sea level and um, in fact, uh, we are downstream of three major rivers, the Rhine, Maas, and Scheldt River. And also we are part of four international river basins. Um, and all these rivers flow out into the North Sea. So uh, as you can imagine, water, water issues are quite important for the Netherlands. Uh, this, uh, here we show some of these important water issues. Uh, first of all, of course, safety and protection against flooding, both against the sea, but also the, these major rivers. Then, of course, water management, excess of water, but also shortage of water that occurs in certain uh, time periods. Water distribution uh, of our water resources and water use, so the, also the distribution among different uh, economic sectors. And then, of course, we have uh, water pollution and related to that water quality. So a lot of different issues. And several of these issues uh, can be addressed with water accounts, or not all, but uh, several of these issues because uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot of demand for data to monitor uh, uh, for, for this, and also in, as an input for policy uh, uses and applications. So uh, at Statistics Netherlands, we've been working on water statistics and water accounts for quite some years. 
Um, in fact, mostly we have focused on the use side, so who's using the water, the groundwater, tap water, uh, um, um, surface water. Um, and we did some pilot projects to compile the full set of water accounts, uh, but last year uh, we did this Eurostat grant project uh, where we tried uh, well, to, to, to compile uh, the total physical supply use tables for water and the asset accounts and some, uh, compile some uh, relevant policy indicators. So the purpose was uh, primarily to test the format of the new Eurostat tables, uh, also setting up a statistical production process and exploring data needs from policymakers. So some slides on the data that we, uh, data sources that we uh, use. Uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, there are four main data sources that we use to compile all the accounts. Uh, first of all, uh, the so-called uh, data from our, uh, water producers, uh, so the water companies. Then we have the annual uh, environmental report from companies. We have um, uh, uh, data from, uh, from agriculture and also the natural groundwater regis register. And you can see in the slide uh, for what sectors they provide the data. Let me provide a little bit more detail for two of these data sources. Namely, first, um, our so-called annual environmental reports. Well, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, all big uh, companies uh, from manufacturing, uh, power plants, but also waste processing have, by, uh, by legal obligation, have to uh, compile these environmental reports. And these environmental reports combine a lot of useful environmental information that we can use. It's uh, data on air emissions, waste, but also on water abstraction and water use and water emissions. So this is a very useful source for us. And from this, we can uh, report on uh, volumes of groundwater and surface water abstracted, but also the, their use of tap water, drinking water and other so-called industry water. So these are only 800 companies, but uh, because we know this, this is a big company, we can um, make also make data for the whole of the population, so for the whole of the manufacturing. A second important data source that I would like to highlight is water use in agriculture, which of course is very important. Um, here we use data from uh, Wageningen Economic Research, uh, who do annually a stratified sample survey per sector of about 1,500 farms. So we get really uh, detailed data um, uh, from them. Um, and also they extrapolate the, to the results to the totals. So we have data on the type of water, so abstraction of groundwater, surface water, but also of drink use of drinking water, uh, the different agricultural sectors, so arable farming, livestock farming, horticulture, etc., etc. Type of use, so is it for irrigation or for livestock drinking, uh, but also we have also some regional data. So this is also a very nice data source that we, uh, that we use. Just a few slides on compilation. Well, uh, if you're really interested in our compilation, uh, of course, you can read it all in our grant report. So I will not go into much detail here. Just let me highlight that, uh, of course, we also need to do some gap filling um, for which you can use some auxiliary data, primarily from our labor accounts and also national accounts. And also let me say that, well, we have now uh, also make, made it an automated system uh, using uh, um, IT in R, which allows us uh, for the next time, because we're now taking it really into production, that we can annually quite simply uh, update all these water accounts um, because we have this automated system. And also, which is in this slide, is that we can now each update after, uh, for T plus one, T plus two uh, data. Now I come to the results. Uh, well, these are the accounts. Well, I will not go into much detail. So, of course, we have a supply table and a use table. Uh, this is a too, big, too big a table, of course. You cannot read it. But, um, well, basically, these, these are the, the, the this, uh, physical supply use tables for water uh, according to the Eurostat format. And as you can see, we were able to, to fill almost all of the cells. Uh, one exception is soil, soil water. That is something we still have to work on if you want to add that. Uh, but basically, uh, we can co compile the, the full set of uh, supply and use table. And of course, the balancing of the supply and use, but also the columns was an important part of this exercise. 
So maybe more interesting than the tables themselves is maybe this table. Well, it's still a big table, with, but this is a so-called combined presentation of um, physical of, uh, for water. Uh, basically, what you see here is in the top part are monetary flows from our national accounts. In the middle part, you have the physical flows from the, from the water, water accounts for the supply use tables. And below, you have so-called ratio indicators. So from this table, it's quite a nice summary of all important water data that, we, that you can, can uh, compile from your water accounts, but also from your uh, national accounts. Uh, so this is a quite nice summary with all the indicators that you really use and also can, of course, use for all kinds of publications. Some pictures. Uh, well, also a Sankey diagram for water in the Netherlands that you can see here. This shows the total water consumption in the Netherlands for 2020. Um, there's a lot, as you can see here, there's a lot of surface water being used. Uh, and also a lot of this uh, surface water is used for cooling. So that's the major water use, as you can see here. But of course, that is directly flows back then to the environment. Also, groundwater is used. And you can also see below how much water is then used for by the water companies and where it goes, how much it goes to, to households, and how much goes to industries and agriculture, etc., etc. So this is, again, a nice way to summarize the data from your big tables from the accounts. Uh, I skipped this one, uh, maybe, uh, to show you the water use in agriculture. That's so that's also directly based on the, on the survey data that I just discussed. Um, as you can see, um, quite some large differences. So that is, in this case, we show uh, drinking water, uh, groundwater, and also fresh surface water. And as you can see here, there, particularly the last uh, three years uh, that we have data for, 2018 to 2019, 2020, you see a very high use of water agriculture. And these uh, were uh, years where we had a lot of there were warm years. So there was you know, a lot of need for water. So you can really show uh, how this has uh, impacted on the water used by agriculture. Uh, also, we worked a little bit on the water balance or the water asset account. Uh, so this is really still work in progress. Um, here you can see the total uh, national water asset uh, for the Netherlands, uh, but we focused on, on the additions to stock and the reductions to stock. So not the total, total stock, but just the changes in stock. Um, and well, um, as you can see, well, we're still working on this. Uh, this is only a total, but of course, there's much more interest here in uh, regional um, uh, water stocks and also see the changes within a year. My final part of my presentation is about users and the policy applications. Um, well, of course, there, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different users for our water data um, that we have identified. Uh, this is just a short summary. So, of course, we have the international organizations that uh, ask for water data. But, of course, also on a national level, we have many users. So, particularly the policy uh, makers, uh, the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water, but also the water boards, which are very important in the Netherlands but also uh, water companies and research institutes, universities, research agencies. So uh, what we did also part of this project is that we organized two workshops with some of these key users. And why was this useful to us? Uh, well, of course, uh, there were two purposes of this, for these workshops. First of all, to make them more familiar with all the water data that we have, um, that, so they know that what is available. But second, we also asked them the question, well, what are you missing? What, what extra data do you want us to develop? Well, um, this is summarized a bit uh, in this slide. So what I would like is, first of all, much more detailed breakdown for the economic sectors. Uh, also to split drinking water use uh, in a use for low-grade applications like rinsing and cleaning, but, and also the use of high-grade applications. They also would like to see more temporal and spatial breakdown, particularly for water, water asset account. And also data on groundwater abstractions divided into abstraction for shallow groundwater and deeper lying aquifers. And finally, to include groundwater flows to and from outside territories. With that, I come to the end of my presentation. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm afraid I have to leave directly after my presentation. So if there are any pressing questions, uh, please, uh, please let me know now.
So yes, you take advantage of short and I give compliments for the presentation. Uh, the God made the world and the Dutch, the Netherlands. So first they reclaim land to the water. Now they are giving water there. Uh, all his attention. If there is any question to Schroeder, so because he has to go to catch his. Uh, if not, uh, Ireland. So Ireland, you have the floor. Um, do you, you have the water meter data from the water supply companies at meter level? Thank you. Yes, that's a, a good question. Well, um, we did a project, but that was some years ago, uh, to analyze all this water meter data. But of course, as you probably know, there's a lot of work because there's a lot of water meter data. Uh, so we analyzed it once a couple of years ago. And now we used it, uh, but we, I think we have to update that. So it's indeed, we do not have to use it regularly, but it's in it, indeed a possible data so additional data source, yes. Thank you, Schroed, for the presentation, for the infographics, for the economics, for this multi-stakeholder dialogue from the beginning. God bless you and the Netherlands for <laughs> being the champions on that. Having that said, uh, we'll continue to the next, uh, to the next speaker, Naira, from the Statistical Committee in Armenia, one of the f five co uh, countries in <coughs> referring to the, to the work that our colleague from uh, um, Austria Agency of Environment, Environment Agency in Austria, and Neide is going to talk about indicators related to water counts in the context, com in the context of communication, bad me, and awareness raising. Neide, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, to the organizers for giving this opportunity again uh, present uh, the our work here and in addition what we have done and also I want to add some words about what we are going to do so um, first uh, I want to refer to our first presenter from OECD who uh, mentioned about the issues the differences in terminology these all these items were in my first presentation when uh, I presented our water accounts based on joint questionnaire and these issues we met and we highlighted them and thank you for again referring to them. Um, so uh, I want to uh, start uh, just from, uh, from the global approach yes, of environmental data exchange agreements. Uh, that means uh, uh, that means that we at first we highlight uh, our stakeholders yes uh, from where from we have to receive the information the data so we have uh, the agreements we sign agreements we sign memorandums anyway we uh, sign some things so to get regularly this information. So uh, mainly the source of our data are, uh, is our administrative registers. Uh, and uh, of course we have inter-institutional protocols that we work inside our uh, statistics and especially in this case with uh, national uh, accounts, with the division of national accounts. So uh, this, is, this is the flow of environmental data from all the ministries uh, uh, based on which we make our publications, uh, reportings, uh, questionnaires, etc. Uh, in this uh, presentation, I did not include uh, water account tables because I have already done it and you know everything, but uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what is the value added by, based on these water accounts? These are uh, the main UNDC indicators that we publish on our Armstead Bank. It is accessible, it has time series, and uh, last time the number of these indicators was uh, 38, and uh, now it is added. So that means we uh, add new information. We have also SDG platform, uh, 
we, and uh, we have also uh, an additional section, uh, environmental economic accounts, where we have water accounts, but yet air emission accounts that we have done for one year, uh, and we are waiting for uh, greenhouse gas inventory updates, so to continue that work. Uh, and these are our uh, publications. Uh, the main publication that all environmental data you can find, uh, Environment and Natural Resources in the Republic of Armenia, it is an annual book. Uh, the next one is Statistical Yearbook, where you can find the whole information, not only environment regarding, and other publications that we do. Uh, some of them are monthly publication, some of them are quarter, and some of them are uh, semi-quarter. So, um, well, now we came to our main uh, topic, water accounts. Uh, as we know, we have uh, physical uh, flows not water assets, because we are waiting for our uh, hydrometeorological center who, who are going to update uh, water resource information finally. So uh, after this job, they, we will update, uh, we'll, we hope that we can uh, compile uh, water assets. But uh, regarding uh, physical flows, we uh, uh, compiled these um, uh, um, uh, accounts in 2015 uh, um, together with uh, Italian experts. They helped us. And uh, based on the uh, central framework and sale water, uh, we compiled a simplified uh, construction uh, and uh, which gives us opportunity to make these uh, accounts annually, every year. So th this was the main issue, because uh, the joint questionnaire was too long in order to fill them. And uh, so based on that uh, questionnaire, at first we uh, filled them and then uh, passed to this simplified uh, structure. And, uh, of course, the national accounts we uh, help us uh, for our hybrid tables. We take information on product output and supply and intermediate co consumption and use. Um, so uh, what was um, uh, here uh, very, uh, you speak about the working group. I think it's very it's just, uh, uh, important uh, idea because each time we, when we apply to uh, our national account department, we explain uh, what do we need, uh, where from do we need, what structure we have, uh, what tables we have. So uh, if we had a working group, in that case, uh, it will be solved automatically. So um, you see here the physical flow uh, uh, simplified tables, uh, and here I want to see to speak about the issue that uh, in the first presentation <laughs> was arised. Uh, total use of water, you see here, uh, which is rather different from the uh, term, term in that we publish in water statistics, but. Uh, uh, in the context of water account, it, it is uh, it's, uh, normal because when we have abstraction information and then the abstraction for own use, abstraction for distribution, it is uh, distinguished. And then the distributed water again used by uh, those who received it is again used, so the total use, maybe we can use another uh, term, term, uh, terms for this uh, word, but the, it is the total use because in the hybrid table, uh, when we put the monetary part, that means the, the same water was used was, uh, the, for the second time. That means the monetary, the, the money must be shown the whole here. <clears throat> and the, uh, respectively, the volume of water must be shown twice. That is not double counting, as uh, our colleagues were trying to uh, 
uh, uh, explain. So uh, for the next, uh, uh, please pay attention to the structure. As we see here, abstraction plus water use, that means the total water use, and the second one, supply of water and total return into the environment. So we have the total supply of water, total supply, that means the water that is supplied to other uh, um, organizations uh, or uh, household, and uh, water that is returned to the environment. So we have the total water use and the total supply of water, and minus that means the consumption, that the water that never returns to the environment. Here we see also the matrix, which is, which is also very interesting. It's like a puzzle that we fill in. Uh, who provides to whom? Uh, simply, I have no figures here, but on our website you can find them. And uh, you can find starting from 2015. Uh, these are the hybrid tables and the K indicators based on these uh, uh, relations. So we uh, get uh, the total output and supply in billion drums uh, for natural water, that means drinking water, and for sewage services. We ask them to distinguish these two rows from, <coughs> derive these two rows. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and for use table and for a supply table, both of them. And uh, uh, in the bottom, you see the already the uh, water flow, uh, the water volume. So uh, based on these uh, two hybrid tables, we have K indicators. Uh, I want to directly pass to the um, diagrams and speak about uh, water exploitation index, which is very important, and water exploitation index plus. We are going to <coughs> suggest our colleagues uh, from the EU for Environment experts to use this indicator because uh, this indicator uh, shows, uh, it includes as a sub-indicator the return flow which is very important. And if you pay attention to the second diagram, uh, the light blue is uh, water exploitation index and the dark blue, that means it is lower, this index, when you add the return flow. The next, uh, the next diagrams, we see here total output and supply in billion drums and uh, supply of water in a million of cubic meters by NACE. And uh, these, are, uh, th these are already uh, based on the hybrid tables, production, that means uh, in 1,000 drums per cubic meter uh, by NACE again. And you see here the lowest part, uh, the, uh, this is the, the E36 water collection, processing, and distribution. And the next, the sewage, and the next, fishing. So these are the, uh, the, the, uh, the lowest um, uh, coefficients here. But we need, uh, well, I, I'll speak about it later. And these are intermediate consumption um, related to cubic meters. Uh, we see here jumps down and up, and we need to understand, but we need our stakeholders or, uh, or economists to, because we haven't published these diagrams yet. These are new, and we are going to discuss these diagrams together with the experts, and uh, EU for Environment Project suggested us to make uh, like uh, infographs and our colleagues from Austria, the uh, Environment Agency also uh, 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 supported us uh, uh, to make diagrams, uh, infographs, for presenting this account available uh, so that, uh, for example, uh, 
uh, from the ministry, somebody sitting there and uh, uh, making this, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, I don't know, decisions, uh, they cannot go, go, go deep in the table so that they can see and say, okay, for example, electricity, gas stream, air has the highest production, for example, yes? Uh, and uh, what uh, we need here, uh, engagement of stakeholders. Yeah, I'm, I'll be fast, <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> because I have reached the end, uh, because I want, yes, the, 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 in two words, stakeholder engagement uh, is very important from the first stage, when you start to uh, collect data when they start to provide information, they are automatically becoming your uh, uh, stakeholder, the, the, uh, the user of these tables, automatically. Simply, we need to explain them in an understandable language. So, um, uh, what about I start, uh, in, the, in, the, in the start, I speak about, these are uh, air emission accounts that we initiated and we have compiled it for 2017, but uh, plus to this, I want to, a few words about the life quality uh, composite index that we uh, uh, developed and it is available on our, uh, in our Armstead Bank. Uh, it is very uh, interesting work because, because uh, it is not new, life quality index, it is not new, but the, this uh, work was done uh, by regions. So this is new and uh, in, for comparison. So uh, it has 17 indicators. It is based on 17 indicators, on subjective and objective indicators. And it's very interesting. So if you uh, give the opportunity, uh, I can make a presentation on, for it. Thanks. Aida, we thank you so much for sharing with us the excellent work you're doing with your team in Armenia and how important also is to bring this aspect of monetary evaluation, also the infographics communicating the work effectively, the so-called 30 minutes, 30 seconds talks on the elevator and how everything is connected and how you need, important to have different experts in the discussion, in the analysis of such work. Having that said, I open the floor for discussion. We have uh, the privilege to have most of our participants here together with the our friend and colleague Mauro in uh, online, so the floor is open. The floor is closed. Uh, <laughs> Michael, Michael uh, Michael, sorry. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. I, I take my hat off as secretary for a time, for a moment. Uh, switch into my head as a water expert because maybe some of you know that I, I, I've been working, or I was working also as an um, water accounting expert for many years at the Austrian Environment Agency. And, and I'm really delighted that we have this on the agenda today. And I would like to thank the presenters for this, um, for all the good presentations. And I'm really delighted to see also that it, water accounting becomes more attention. Maybe because of a sad reason, because the water stress in Europe and many countries of the world is really increasing and also now gets the attention of the industry, of the economy, that this has really significant impact if there is not water available when you really need it. So water accounting is really a tool to inform these policies. My own experience is, and this is a question that I want to ask Naira, so when I still worked in, in, in Austria, so I remember there was a big problem, for example, to get data from industries um, about uh, water use by industries, so water, uh, water taken from public water supply, water abstracted from, from groundwater or taken from surface waters and, uh, and this kind of things, because there was a lot of, um, as, like the, the reporting burden was considered as very big by the industry, they had a very powerful voice actually, so it was very difficult, and I still think it's still not possible, and I have observed this in many countries, actually, that this is an, a challenge. So my question to you is, for example, how do you get this water from the industry? Is there a survey? Is this administrative data? How, what's the coverage of that? It's a very specific question. Thank you. Uh, 
yes, we uh, uh, it was not uh, difficult, but uh, it mu it had to be reliable information. Why? Because uh, in all five countries we have uh, uh, the same, the similar reporting form. And uh, this reporting form is provided by the organizations that have permissions for abstraction water, surface water or groundwater, and for uh, emitting, for polluting. Based on these permissions, they provide reporting. And in this reporting, they provide information on factual uh, abstraction, put the permissions also and uh, how much they uh, pollute it and how much they pay. And we join these two, um, uh, we have two databases joined. One we get from the tax service where they uh, report how much they uh, um, pay and for how much uh, water and emitters they pay. So we join. When we see issue, we do it yet uh, manually, but we are going now to uh, develop an integrated system in our uh, in Armstad. So uh, this was a, uh, another <laughs> close step. But uh, due to this integrated system, we'll join these two information automatically. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Nairo, for the comprehensive and detailed um, reply. Azerbaijan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, all presenters, for your interesting information. I don't have question, actually, but I have some additional information related to our valuable uh, expert, Ar uh, Arnold Schoenberg. And as he knows, uh, water uh, supply use table is authorized to our Minister of Environment by legislation. And they have some pilot uh, activities uh, related to these water accounts. And our uh, state statistical committee showed uh, his interest uh, on the first day. And we had uh, prepared a draft methodology of uh, water supply use table. And we are looking forward uh, for the next steps. And we know that upcoming times, Arnulf and with some other experts will visit Baku again and in order to solve uh, some puzzles uh, in this regard. And we would be uh, happy to contribute to Ministry of Environment uh, to complete this uh, account for your uh, observation and for your willingness to be always actively participating in this process I don't know if there's a specific uh, feedback from the audience on, on the comment from Azerbaijan rather than embracing their energy and motivation moving forward if not I'll go to Mauro he has a question and then after to Georgia Mauro the floor is yours yeah thank you um, just um, I would just like to congratulate the other presenters and especially Armenia. And I think she really spotted uh, uh, the, the, the issues I was trying to raise. Uh, and um, I've not put in my presentation and the new flow scheme is probably not the time now, but this is precisely the question we will be trying to address. And uh, if you look, for example, at the presentation of the Netherlands, um, it, it is clear that they uh, use water use and consumption interchangeably. And in fact, they are not. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, as Armenia pointed out, the difference is essentially returns. Um, so there is really an issue here of um, trying to clarify terms and definitions. Uh, because also, as uh, highlighted by Austria, it is, it is very important that we speak the common language. And terminology is key here because uh, uh, we just not uh, not only we have different definitions across different frameworks or questions, but we also speak different languages. When you ask, when you talk to an economist, uh, uh, an economist will not will not mean the same thing as an hydrologist. Um, exactly. So, uh, 
So, um, you know, th these are these are precisely issues that we're we're really trying to address here. So, I'm I'm pretty pleased uh, once again that European countries have have had a, a positive feedback. They provided us with very interesting and important comments, which we try to integrate. And we hope we will also uh, extend this consultation with other OECD countries and possibly beyond that. Thanks, back to you. Thank you. Um, your point is well taken and uh, I think it echoes in most of our participants this need for the common language and common terminology. It's fundamental so that we are on the same page to move ahead. Having that said, I will give the floor to Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Um, many thanks uh, for all presenters, um, and uh, I would like to express my uh, gratitude to the European Union. I have uh, just uh, two comments. Um, uh, my sincere gratitude to the European Union uh, and uh, you funded project, you for environment um, and uh, Europe, uh, environmental data and water resources, all partners of this project, and the European Union for continued support to my country. So Georgia has started a reform in the field of water resources management uh, and based on the integrated water resources management principles. So we are now uh, preparing the uh, river basin management plans. And so in this way, for us, it's very important to have comprehensive data uh, related to uh, water use, water um, uh, uh, abstraction and water discharge and to be honest we have uh, some challenges in this regard so we are uh, very much um uh, uh, we need the support from uh, this project and we have bilateral uh, also uh, discussion with uh, <laughs> Arnov and um, we um, hope that uh, we will have uh, this support and um, we will continue um, uh, hard work in this direction and so I would like also to congratulate Armenia for uh, the great work <laughs> has been done and um, we will continue our regional activities also under this project. And thank you very much once again. We uh, receive with pleasure your comments and you are again, like in Azerbaijan, the idea of working together, having the same, proposing our same, the same goals and trying to approach this in a holistic way and bring forward the experience from one another and share those. Will be any additional comment? Are we? Sorry, you are so in front that I lost perspective. Moldavia, Republic of Moldova, you have the floor. Apologize. Я тоже хочу поблагодарить Евросоюз за поддержку в разработке экологических счетов. Но в этом году Мы, я о другом хочу сказать сейчас. В этом году мы заполняли вопросник ЮНС Дивинап, в том числе и по водным ресурсам, и столкнулись с такой проблемой, что у нас в стране никто не рассчитывает объем водных ресурсов. Я хотела бы спросить, в Армении кто-то угу. рассчитывает? И еще вопрос о составлении водных кадастров. Составляет ли кто-то в стране водный кадастр? У нас когда-то гидрометео составляли. Несколько лет назад был проект, и эта работа перешла к агентству Апель воды Молдовы. Но работа остановилась. Нет продолжения. Нет, нет, нет продолжения. Как у вас обстоят? the question i'll reply in english sorry uh, as i mentioned we have no water assets uh, in the water accounts we do not have water assets we have only uh, physical flows but we publish uh, renewable water resources you can find them on our website regarding the water resources total water resources now uh, the, uh, we have um, plans, management plans, for we have six 
the water basin management areas, basins, and for uh, three of them, they have already uh, planned this. Um, uh, uh, they have already uh, uh, full uh, compiled the plans, but for the r three of them, they are ongoing. So after updating this information, then we can we hope that we can just make this uh, water accounts f uh, full. And what about water cadaster? Uh, water cadaster now is under the Ministry of Environment. So uh, they, they, they give permissions, but uh, the reporting are by the organizations are sent to inspectorate body. This is the issue that we discussed and as an administrative register for us now is inspectorate body and not ministry of environment this is this is issue because we need these two uh, databases to be joined together so what about our integrated database it will join physical uh, the actual abstraction and actual payment but the permissions will be again not uh, joined to this database. This is issue. Thanks for the question. Yeah, thank you. Um, addressing the questions which we are not are referring to the questions which came up now, uh, probably a small clarification to bring up that we need to clarify and bring people together on the, on the terminology to raise the issue is one thing, but they are very good news when people are coming together, it can be solved. So the issue is not really to discuss big um, things because the terminologies are documented well, so we can make reference to it. The challenging is really to bring the people together. And once that is done, you can quite good progress on national level. And the second thing is that I believe we all need to ask for what we are doing that one, for what do we need the data and to whom we address the data. So um, while probably water statistics rather is more driven by water, um, by, by water resource management, where the aspects, a classic example was given here on should we consider water used in hydroelectricity production or not, from the water resource perspective, that is not such an issue because the water which flows into a hydroelectric plant goes in on one side in situ and comes out on the other side, more or less, while to match it with economic figures is very much important. So the double counting of water used might be for the water resource management aspect not the dominating thing or rather irritating, as you see on, on as you saw on the on the Dutch presentation. But for economic purpose, because you generate money through that water, it's very important to to have that one. So um, it is really to sit together, discuss, and, and then it was also shown how to communicate your message to whom you want to address that and whom you want to tell your information. And I consider that as an important part also when starting up and using water accounts or water statistics or investing in data collection. So you need to know somehow at the beginning what, what is the challenges you would like to address with the information? Also, water resources. So the, the asset accounts on water is from an economic perspective of interest, but there are other means to ensure that you use your groundwater resource in a sustainable manner, not to over-abstract. You, you don't need the overall water asset accounts in order to ensure a sustainable management of your groundwater resources, for example. So you need to answer these questions before. Thank you. I thank you because you're already summarizing quite very well the, the points of, and the take-home message of this, uh, of this uh, last um, session. If we don't have additional questions, not from the web, not from the floor, I would just try to pencil quite a few take-home message. 
So water accounts do represent an important element of this year, but at the same time is uh, also very relevant policy, relevant data. We saw these issues here in illustrations from the work from the from an international organization, but also at the country level, with the five countries in the Caucasus, also the Netherlands. But we, this, uh, uh, this, um, this, uh, this policy relevant element also brings the challenge of communicating and dialoguing the same matter or the same issue across different stakeholders and how important is these platforms, these dialogue platforms of the multi-stakeholders to come on board from the beginning. And like uh, somebody said, no man is an island. I mean, in, we cannot do this in silos. And we, if we do it out with other communities, science to science, science to policy with the common goals, things will have a much more societal importance. So your work will be of added value in supporting and informing decision makers and also investors. Having then said, I thank you all of you for your tenacity, for the eloquent presentations, and I give back the floor to the chairperson, Chair Madam Joanna. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paolo, and thanks for all the presenters in, in this session nine. And so this brings us very close to the end of our seminar, and we only have session 10 left, which will be the conclusions and recommendations for further work, and this will be chaired by myself as well. <laughs> but I will keep this uh, uh, chair, uh, chair tag for now. Um, and this will be a brief one, and, but for starters, I think uh, we will go to Daniel first, and he will present some results from the survey that we have had for you during this seminar. Okay, here it comes. And actually, this is just a very short preview. 